How Markel lost his ability to shoot. I kind of want to just watch it. His most viewed one, 4 million select. views. Markel what happened to RP? Uh, I was on there for hours and the server reset. So I just hopped off. For now, I might go back. That's a bad look at free throw right there. I, I hate to be oh my the God, it is loud as hell. Am I tripping? Or is it really loud? This is the most bizarre thing we've ever wait, wait, seen. Wait, 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 wait. Amari Cooper did a Fultz you know, impression? That's a bad look at free throw right there. I hate to be the one to, to say this, but you know, oh my god, for, for me. this is the most bizarre thing we've ever seen from a number one overall pick in the draft right now. Anthony Bennett exists, just his existence is more bizarre. Chat is emotional. Uh, don't, don't, uh, what's it called? Remind me of this tragedy. This video is gonna make me cry. I watched him in college too. We all watched him in college. He's the first overall pick. No, I love my. Hey, hey, receipts, receipts, receipts. Open up another YouTube tab. Receipts. Click productions. Four players. Shock NBA. Look who's in the thumbnail. And I said he would shock the NBA because he would cut. This was after he just got traded there. Ever since, he earned a six. The year's fifty million dollar contract. I feel like that's decent enough. He got injured. OG was averaging like seven. Now he's averaging like sixteen. Simons, quite literally, epitome of shot. And then the other one, people hated Tatum. I said Tatum would shock the NBA. Finals appearance. Screw all of you. No ball. Instead, Chris, I don't even try to no ball either. Logically, it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it just you know what I mean born to happen. To this kid. Jesus Christ. I'm so sorry, Markel. In all doing? my years of watching the NBA, no story of a player has ever stuck with me like Markel Fultz's has. There are so many theories regarding what happened hey. and how it transpired. So many layers that extend past his basketball life and into his personal life. Markel was drafted into what seems like an excellent situation, surrounded NG. by two of the best youngest players in the league. Remember all them the photos? chances of failing seemed so incredibly minuscule. The way he failed is a combination of mismanagement, unlucky events, and the unfortunate pressure of being drafted with the top pick. There's no definitive uh. moment in the entirety of Fultz's saga that you can point to and say, this is where it all went wrong. However, you can notice small details here and there that snowballed over time until it was too late. The shoulder injury may have taken the attention, but they won't tell you the full story. That's where I come in. This is the real story. Mm, no, he said, that's where I come in. Mark the bad signal for Dylan does basketball. The Markel Fultz saga. NBA draft scout. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you, you deserve it. Sure, you're him. Yo, this dude deserves more than 100k. No way I should have more on my second channel this dude has. He's got like seven videos. But then again, though, I see why, like, I don't know. Not, not like to discredit him, but I like see why Fultz people will serve. Whatever, I'm not going to my YouTube. At the Matha Academy, one of the best. No photo, no bev. I was going to say, just to clarify, I was going to say like, oh yeah, I can see why you wouldn't subscribe to an NBA YouTube channel. Because like, oh my bad. Oh yeah, I'm right here. Right? Don't worry, don't worry. I didn't lose my spot. I was say like, oh yeah, because it's going to pop up. The next one's going to pop up anyways, if it's a big video and it's great or something. You like basketball, so it's probably going to pop up again. Shoot, people don't subscribe to me probably for that reason. The Academy, one of the best high schools for athletes. What many don't remember about this time is that just two years previously, Fultz was cut from his sophomore team. He took this personally and worked even harder on his skills, eventually making it to the varsity team. He then dominated. Why everyone took got the Michael Jordan story and the 2K the story? The high school scene and asserted himself as one of the best players in the nation. Markel had plenty of accomplishments at such a young age, so the choices for college seemed widespread, with many big names on the. This is what would have happened if I just kept on playing basketball. Low key though, if I was in shape and I didn't want to do stuff with uh YouTube and social media, cause I I quit uh well I in eighth grade I was golden in the tryouts, you know what I'm saying? In seventh grade I was trash, but I wanted to be nice, right? Go to work. Eighth grade come back in the tryouts, the last game of the tryout, I dropped like 20 points in a game to like 20. It was like 17 to a game to 20, right? And and I got cut because the all the people in my school was trash. They probably didn't care anyways. These gym teachers, they probably weren't getting paid. Actually, they probably were getting paid enough. Gym teachers get paid a lot. Um, Then ninth grade, I never tried out. Basically, though, I would play ball, though, in gym. And the gym teachers always, who I think, like, partially coach the basketball teams. Because ninth grade is obviously high school. So then the, the coaching changes. Bro, um, they would always come up to me in gym. Oh, my God, you should try out. Bro, if I was, like, skinnier and if I cared and if I wasn't trying to make it in the social media world. Sorry, my mic fell. If I wasn't trying to make it in the social media world, I would have... 
I could have I could have been decent. I could have been a solid shooter because I I made my Knicks page in eighth grade going into ninth, I'd, and then I, I, it was gone from there. That's how I get all, all them autographs behind me. You know what I'm saying? That I was just showing in my last video. The horizon. Despite this, he ended I wanna up be a journalist. I want to be like Woj. I'd be, I'd be like a school Pablo that's when known I'm for having many former NBA players like Isaiah Thomas. DeJounte Murray and Brandon Roy. What's interesting to note is that all of these- The thing is though, I'm way better now, obviously. I mean, I mean, I mean, I am an adult, but I'm way better now because back then, like I always like love like the mid range post game inside play type of thing. But I was like a normal heighted, like middle school. Like I was tall, but at the same time, you're just normal height. There's also kids that are like abnormally tall and like six something when you're in the middle school. So there's no like driving and crazy stuff unless you're crazy athletic and great. I like if I, I so how I scored all them points in that game, remember vividly shooting deep, threes like deep threes and i was efficient in that game too um i remember too yeah no i just remember, i remember that game so vividly but not vividly but i just remember shooting deep threes and like no mid-range but um then as i got older i got taller and now i'm like taller than most people when i play ball so it's all mid-range interior some you know what i mean handle uh, players weren't the best in their class been on a bad diet past week and my mental health going down that was your first chat ever hope you do well hit me up roy was the sixth pick in the 2006 draft Dejounte was a late first rounder and isaiah was the last pick why not choose a more popular school fellow guards of that draft class like De'Aaron fox and lonzo did he have Ball a choice chose kentucky and ucla which were or was it because it was where he was from? Successful. What gives? To Markel, when he entered the gym, it was simply love at first sight, and Washington offered him a contract months before the other schools. That's understandable, but also thought provoking. The top player in the nation chose a school that hadn't qualified for the NCAA tournament in six years. Nonetheless, Kell arrived as a Washington Husky and burst onto the scene. His skill set as a guard was on Jesus. He could be an excellent playmaker, but also create shots for himself. Oh, yeah, as you guys are doing the chat talking about some, oh, yeah, uh, I watched Markel play, blah, blah, blah. That's the same dude who was talking about he went to the Pro-Am game, right? I don't know. Maybe not. Off the dribble. Are you he still here? Is that still you? He was a terrific finisher with poster dunks and flashy Pro layups the every night. I, we, we might got to watch that. perhaps the most coveted aspect of his game was his effortless sharpshooting. He could rise really? up over any defender, yeah. pull up from 30, and hear the net swish. Fultz could do everything Jesus. as a point guard offensively. His defense, however, was often criticized as lackadaisical. Yet with him- <laughs> It looks so, so confused in this photo. Standing at six feet, four inches, there was a perfectly good reason to assume he'd develop a strong defensive game at the next level. Even What's if he important didn't. to highlight is that at this time, in every single mock draft, Foltz was at the top, mm -hmm. not top point guard, top player overall. It's easy to look back now with revisionist history Jason and Tatum, a bold claim that Jason Tatum should have gone first overall, nope. but evidence from 2017 shows otherwise. The Washington Huskies went 9 and 22. Matisse. <laughs> Yo, how we keep tournament. getting back to the same and players? All eyes went to the man himself regarding this. If he was so good, then how come his team lost so much? Foltz fans pointed out that the roster you guys want to do a redraft of uh every we could do it on here low-key itself lacked talent which is true and the basketball world paid no mind to this loser would it be that fun i don't know because the 2017 draft was fastly approaching the 2017 draft lottery took place with the boston celtics landing the top slot they kept this pick for about a month when suddenly out of nowhere they it was out of nowhere the sixers receiving the third pick as philly stepped up to one fans immediately began criticizing boston general manager danny for making that was really such five years ago. Wow. How could you pass up the opportunity to draft what seemed like the perfect guard? Looking back, we truly don't to know. To be fair, did they have Isaiah at Fultz either way was coming off the bench. Yeah, they had Isaiah, right? Or was this the year they traded for Kyrie? Was it? I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But either way, they had one or the other, and they were, yeah, yeah, they had, uh, they had Isaiah going into Kyrie this this off season, and they were expected to put Fultz off the bench regardless. To be fair, but it is what it is. Know why the Celtics made this decision? They could have just been that infatuated with Jason Tatum. That and I think position. I mean, eh, yes and no. I don't. Know. The offensively polished forward from they Duke. literally traded either for that or they could have seen something. Oh my wrong god, with the polished forward from Duke, either that or they.
What, bro? Yo, yo, yo. That is not real. Markel Fultz. He struggled badly in his workout with the C's. His shot form looked fine, but the end result was a clank off the rim. Other fans love pointing to Fultz's free throw percentage as a reason that we should have been concerned, but that's also pure revisionist history. They claim the true way to determine if somebody is a shooter is by their free throws, they which do. I agree with. However, when Fultz arrived in the league, it's not that he couldn't make threes but that he was physically incapable of shooting, of shooting jump shots yeah. at all we'll never know for sure why boston skipped on markel oh, man. and all of the media attention i remember that went to philly as they had a chance to form a dynasty fultz simmons and bead two number one picks and one third pick who had shown flashes of greatness markel had another terrible workout with philly just a few days before the draft but now it was far too late to think anything of that you'd already given up the assets to get here fultz's trainer his jumper looks different by simply saying the kid was nervous which made sense at the time <laughs> reminder it's easy to say now that these were red flags but it makes no sense to skip on the best prospect in the class because of a few bad workouts philly very chose true very the true first pick a few days later but those are like NBA really bad shooting loaded into excitement as markel every prospect be shooting stage, lights out when they aren't shooting workouts moment, a few interesting words were uttered by reese davis the espn draft analyst and did mugs just say that's still my phone background are you talking about the picture of Embiid and markel and no no it's not mugs i swear to god this is why i beat you by 40 on 2k there's no way bmx biker and now he he loves to throw caution to the wind and did you catch that an avid bmx biker an avid bmx biker this sentence is often referenced by many when the question of what happened arises the theory goes <laughs> he as did follows. the j oh Fultz, no he did the he did the jalen uh what, what is his name oh my he did the jay williams being a big fan of biking injured his shoulder and refused to tell the sixers organization so his contract wouldn't be voided i find this theory to be incorrect had this motor accident been the case oh, we would have known. damage would have been found in Fultz's shoulder. However, the Sixers stated multiple times that this wasn't the case, and there wasn't anything damaged in his shoulder. That fact in itself crumbles this theory to pieces. In other news, Jason Tatum, the player Philly essentially traded Fultz for, talked in his draft interview. He said that Boston would have taken him with the number one pick, had they not traded down. Immediately, Maybe. Sixers and NBA fans alike mocked this statement, because at the time, it sounded ludicrous. This once again puts into question, why did Danny Ainge feel so strongly about skipping on Fultz? It's so At crazy how different college is. I'm like, I, I, after that, I read that dude, thank you, Mr. Izzy, for the subscription. After that dude wrote that comment about Ball and Fultz being better, okay, I don't even remember being too in, like crazy into like Fultz. I just remember him obviously being the number one pick, but projected. But Ball, Lonzo Ball, you know what I'm saying? I remember all this stuff about him, obviously. Geno Hills, then college, UCLA. I remember OSN was making vlogs with him, all this crazy stuff. Um, What's it called? And I just just uh you know i it's so crazy how different college first of all alonzo's shooting went it, it increasingly abysmally downhill i don't know why the next player i thought of because i thought of uh you know when your brain goes down rabbit holes like i was thinking of lonzo's playmaking how he seemed like he'd be one of the best playmakers which he is to be fair it made me think of d'angelo russell d'angelo russell was so good as a playmaker score all this stuff and it just I, it translated for a short amount of time and it, it has but it hasn't you know what i mean like he seemed like a world class and it's so weird what separates these like these guys like it's just so odd you have three Fultz jerseys bro you bought all those in two years when did you buy three Fultz, jer Fultz jerseys? Fast forward to Summer League, the first game on the board. Yo, this stream, the last stream I did that was 10 hours felt really long. This one has not felt like nine hours long or 841. Sixers versus Celtics, Fultz versus Tatum, and fans were excited. 11? The two young guns battled it out. Fultz had flashy shots. Tatum threw down dunks. Okay. It was looking like a future rivalry was setting itself in stone. Jason Tatum, however, got the last laugh, hitting a long jumper to win the game. Overall, Markel Him. played well, but was inefficient. He was sloppy and turned it over quite a bit, although that was expected from a young player in his first ever game. On the other hand, Markel looked poised. With Jesus, he just hit off the bank three? I should have known at this point. 
The other hand, Markel. The straight away off the bank? Oh no. You gotta be kidding me. Poised with many. Are you serious? We continue to try. Oh my jumpers, god. Hitting this smooth mid range J. Or has he pull up Jimbo as Kevin Durant? <laughs> has he pull up Jimbo? <laughs> Don't ever say that to me again, Dylan. I swear to God. I tweeted. The defense was fantastic as well. The blocked shots by Markel were highlight worthy, showing the elite defensive potential. In all of those great moments, however, the first domino in the Fultz saga began to fall. Jesus. Take a look at the jump shot in these clips. Not bad looking at all, but different. I know. I, I could tell from the workouts. Washington. Much lower. Yeah, it's such a higher release. The same high release point as. That's what I. Yo, earlier when uh when they played this clip, like, you know what I'm saying? Now Dylan, you know, he noticing it too. Four. The next game against the Jazz, he continued to play well, dropping 23 points with a flurry of more jump shots. The form was still visibly different than his college one, but since they were going in, nobody seemed to notice. His third summer league game was when the next domino fell against the Warriors. Fultz was incredibly aggressive in the paint, driving every single time. Then, as he went up for a block, he came down hard and injured his ankle, thus sidelining him for the rest of and then the he summer didn't, league. Yeah. Injuries happen, and this specific ankle wasn't some sort of a threat to his health at all. The real problem here is that by sustaining this injury, he was no longer playing, and the Sixers as a team wouldn't be able to fully monitor him until the season began a few months later. In between this period of the Summer League injury and the impending season, something went horribly wrong for Markel Fultz. Throughout his time in a Sixers uniform so far, his form visually seemed fine, but he wasn't taking as many jump shots as when he was in college. In fact, that final game against the Warriors saw him only shooting one jumper, a moving mid-range bucket. These shooting and jump shot issues didn't begin after the ankle injury, but before it quite possibly during the draft. There were many rumors supporting the idea that he never wanted to come to Philly in the first place, so when he heard the news of the Sixers moving up to draft him, that could have been a tough pill to swallow. Tanking to the top by Yaron Weitzman adds more ammo to the mental hurdles Markel had to go through. He had a fight with his mother, then went to the gym, and his form looked horrendous. Lloyd Pierce, the- Fultz's mom took more control of Fultz's schedule and finances. She'd argue with Markel, whom she continued to view as her baby boy despite him now being a multi-million dollar brand. He'd fight over cleaning out storage boxes in the family home. He'd call him dozens of times a day. One day, after a particularly trying fight with Ebony over a desire to purchase a new car, Fultz met William to the gym. He shot the ball worse than he had in a few weeks. But that's where everything went south. Ebony got an apartment downtown, but felt like she needed to exert even more control. She'd become annoyed if Markel had girls over at night. She installed security at cameras around his home. He'd often eavesdrop and sometimes even call to scold Markel about comments she'd heard. A couple weeks after they moved in, Ebony printed dozens of flyers for Tappan, put in their neighbor's mailboxes, asking them to stop bothering her son. Tappan only distributed them to families that he thought had kids, which led to a fight, which led to her offering Markel an ultimatum. Ta Who is Tappan? Is that the agent? What the hell? I never heard about that. Then went to the gym and his Markel had to go to the top by Yaron Weitzman adds more ammo to the mental hurdles Markel had to go through. He had a fight with his mother, then went to the gym, and his form looked horrendous. Lloyd Pierce, the Sixers' assistant coach at the time, worked with Fultz on an off day after Summer League had closed. I've never seen anything like that before, Pierce said to colleagues after the workout. This kid can't shoot. None of this had made the news though. Nobody really knew about Fultz's problems, so he went to the only person he trusted with basketball, his longtime trainer, Keith Williams. Keith had been training Fultz for years, so when Markel came to him and said that he believed somebody was holding down his arms as he was lifting to shoot, they tried multiple practices to fix this issue. One of which was him shooting while lying on the gym what floor, the hell? or dribbling the ball into his shot to create a rhythm. We don't know what effect this training had on Fultz or his shot but it certainly wasn't positive. October 18th, <laughs> 2017 was- Look at him, he's literally doing the stupid thing he does with Rico on right there. The little, little this, the little this, you see that? You see that? No, they all peep that, y'all know ball though. Training had on I'm the one who goes crazy shot, over jump shot for him. But it certainly wasn't positive. October 18th, 2017 was the first game- Three days of after my 16th birthday. Career. 
and it was a complete mess. Don't get me wrong, he showed flashes with his finishing ability and defense, but it seemed like throughout it all, he was a shadow of his former self. Once again, the lack of jump shots was present. He shot one the entire game. This off-balance mid-range two-pointer looked great actually, and gave actually Sixers did. fans hope that Markel could eventually return to his old ways. We now know that Fultz has always been better with moving off-balance shots. The precise reason for this is True. undetermined, but it's a mix of him not thinking while shooting and it just being a more comfortable shot. I'm the same exact way. Ask my friend John. Hates me, bro. My spin jumper. Oh my god. And I have the high release points. There's film. And perhaps the there's film. You know what? Let's no. Worst I'm not gonna moment. Do it. It's like game. ego. Fultz was fouled, driving inside, and shot two oh, of no. the worst free throws That's not even the worst I've ever seen in my life. It's easy for any bystander to look at this moment and laugh at a professional basketball player having the shot of I'm a I'm pretty child. sure this is after he but came back. That last clip was in preseason. This was a 19-year-old rookie, someone who was selected number one overall with monumental expectations of being the finishing piece for a franchise. A guy who was an absolute sharpshooter just a few months ago, for whatever reason, is unable to lift up his the shoulder lift on his jumper just a too? few months ago. Mm. For whatever reason, is his jumper did vary in a lot of these clips because he does like the off the ball shot or off the ball or whatever. Games. So did Kobe. Like, so did a lot of people. Jordan, you look at, look at Michael Jordan's shoot, a lot of the time his form looks exactly the same because he would get so much lift on his jump shot to where he already had the separation. Kobe would be taking fadeaway shots fading away dumb far dead falling on the ground like mike was usually pretty i feel like at a whatever the hell angle to the ground i feel like he was always pretty you know what i'm saying to try and help his team this yes and no of, of course you know there's variations he shot millions of shots games, until Foles Thousands, was yanked whatever. from the team and listed as out for the foreseeable i I don't think, did he play early in the season? I feel like he, that's crazy too. Ben Simmons right there. Look at Tim De Luau. Future. The Sixers said he had. His jump shot isn't broken, but he doesn't really shoot threes. I feel like he shoots mid ranges now more so. Scapular muscle imbalance, which is a fancy way for saying his shoulder just wasn't right. There was also word from his agent, Raymond Brothers, that Fultz had fluid taken out of his shoulder. This was then changed to having fluid put. You know what's crazy? I feel like this is a decent enough personal story to share, though. Uh, a few months ago, randomly, um, what was it? Uh, my shoulder, bro. I swear to God, and like I wouldn't be telling the story. Oh, my shoulder got hurt. No, like, um, <laughs> I late April, all of a sudden, I couldn't lift. I I think I had done like I don't know. Either I was just too stable, too whatever the hell, too idle all the time, and then all of a sudden, I couldn't lift my shoulder up. You actually see me rubbing right here because for the past four or five months, well, at the beginning. I couldn't lift up my shoulder past here or whatever or something crazy. Now I could play ball. I'd be outside playing basketball. I could do my left-handed hooks again. I'm like fake ambidextrous or whatever. I don't know if I'm fully ambidextrous, but whatever. I'm solid. I went to the doctor early May and they were like, oh, you gonna have a torn rotator cuff. Like that's how bad it was. Like I had like a really bad, I had to tell my friends, I'm like, oh man, I might have like a torn rotator cuff. Then they did the x-rays, nothing wrong. I went to physical therapy. Um, didn't really help at all, honestly. Then I, uh, and then I just, um, went home and just kind of went on with life and it's kind of just gotten better. Like, I don't, I don't know how there is some weird stuff that could happen, but that's not to relate it. I just felt like telling that story because <laughs> I had a shoulder injury myself and it's I am in still in shoulder. pain. There seemed to be no understanding of what was going on. With yeah, all you ever this seen me, happening, like, I don't know. Sixers general manager, Brian Colangelo. Yeah, it was nothing. Like, they did an x-ray of my shoulder. They never did one of my neck. They did one of my shoulder. They're going to do an MRI for my shoulder as well. Hopefully, it turns out nothing like yours. Well, I mean, thankfully, mine got... It's, like, serviceable. Oh, yeah, like, like oh, my God. I'm not, like, the strongest dude. I've never been, like, a gym person, but I have, like, 20-pound, like, dumbbells. And, like, late last year, last year, I also was way skinnier, too. And I would, like, like you know what I mean? I'd be, like, working out lifting like 20 i could i could lift it perfectly fine with my right hand couldn't lift it with my left at all not even in the slightest so it was um literally couldn't then when i went to physical therapy i could not lift one pound or two pound dumbbells at all with my with my left arm that's how bad it was now it's back to like pretty normal honestly i i something like i feel like everybody in this chat just lengthy what yeah curl i guess yeah curl i don't know the terminology said that there was nothing wrong physically with folks i have never For liked the, the gym five the gym months it tragedy. was complete radio silence. Fultz quietly trained and retooled his jump shot because now Playing he basketball. lacked the strength to shoot from a few feet away. There were moments in the recovery process
process where NBA media members forgot he was human, to the point where fellow veteran teammate JJ Redick had to explicitly tell them to leave Fultz alone. The gym, the gym is cool, and like I think it's good. Hold the skinny people up for sure. Nobody else is up this early or up this late. Um, no, like I feel like a lot of my like, oh man, a lot of like people like become gym addicts and then it just that just is it like that's all they do with their life so uh six foot 150 i'm not gonna lie i was i was six to 165 uh, i gotta I, i'm trying to get back down like a little bit but alone first thank you for that you know that was like a another big but i when i was a kid i was like five eight two thirty big brother moment that you you know you stuck stood up for me and it made me feel even better other basketball what did JJ media do? began teammate JJ Media members forgot he was human, to the point where fellow veteran teammate JJ Redick had to explicitly tell them to leave Fultz alone. First, thank you for that. You know, that was like a I gotta watch this big, interview. big brother moment that you, you know, you stood, stood up for me and it made me feel even better. Other basketball media began to hop on the Fultz criticism as well, some jumping to calling him a bust already. Throughout all of I mean, this, Fultz maintained that what was going on was an injury. Hey, His Jason. rookie season at this point was a complete disaster. Five games played, and it seemed like he never get the chance to show what he was capable of. That was the case until in late March. My weirdest injury was a lumbar muscle strain. Got it surfing. Still to this day, first one I thought of when I read my weirdest injury. One time, uh, I wore my AirPods or my earbuds too much. That too much wax built up in my ear. And uh, I would wear them when I slept. It had nothing to do with being awake. Too much wax build up and I couldn't hear for a month out of one of my ears. Um, I had to do like the drops and all that stuff. Uh, another one. What else? Uh, my knee. Or actually, I had back spasms one one summer. That was weird. Like, it's just a weird feeling. It, it, just, it just occurs with nothing creating it. I don't know why. Um, what's another one? Oh man, your right ear is clogged. Sorry, buddy. Uh, yeah, but I don't think it was as bad. As um, what's another one? My knee has been. I've had jumpers knee on my right knee for like two years. I actually think it kind of got better, but not fully. I haven't played basketball in a while, but it kind of got better. But I don't know. I'm just old. But yeah, my uh, yeah, my my knee has been cooked for years. I think they diagnosed it with something wrong with it, but it's just they yeah they did an X-ray on it late last year because it was it just always hurts. I I, I wore it like knee what's it called thing like like one of them copper the copper fits are garbage sorry I guess they'll never sponsor me those are garbage they just they bro they leave the the marks like on like the top and bottom of it where they like go on your leg it just leaves the marks uh like it's really like too tight bro March of 2018 when markel went to the head coach at the time brett brown and told him i'm ready markel Fultz will play tonight uh it was his decision i mean it's I was 5'11", 130 two years ago. Now I'm 165. You right though. When I started going to the gym two years ago, that's all I think about now. LOL. Yeah, bro. Like all these people that like, like are, <laughs> it, it is what it is. It is what it's, it is. It's ridiculous. We've seen TikToks what? about the gym. I'm like, yeah, but what else do you do though? What he's been through and he understands it and I understand it. You know, that's the, the screw. Five sprains. I've never had an ankle sprain. Get when somebody says, and with the first pick of the 2017 NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz will play tonight. Those Oh, long hikes in mosh pits. Ayo, I was I was in that rolling loud mosh pit from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. watching Baby Keem, Kodak, Lil Baby, and Kendrick. I was there. So I'm still him. I'm still him. Don't worry. 20 years old. I'm not washed yet. Well, my friend John told me he was getting his vision was getting fuzzy. He had to dip out. He's but being tall, because I was taller than 99. There was some girls in there that were like 5'4. Being being like five, being 6'2 or whatever the hell. Being anywhere taller than 5'11. Oh my god. God, you were good because you could breathe. <laughs> it is those are nuts. You you know you saw what happened at Astro World. <laughs> they they ugh. those were the words that rang. A lot of people passed out during ski mask set the night before. Every after every song or even even in between verses, he would be calling people. He would be people would be pointing at people in the crowd to get them lifted out of the crowd. The NBA world. It was five months of absolute disaster, confusion, lost hope. Yet, in just a normal regular season game against the Denver Nuggets, Fultz would suddenly be returning. 
In his first game back, he dropped 10 points and 8 assists. Once the game slowed down, you could see the potential begin to show. I love this Hard guy. drives to the rim. Ooh, what a finish. Down. You could see the potential begin to show. Hard drives. It's just the shooting that the cooked him. Clever passes and a smooth mid-range game. Still goaded. The only issue is that with this return, there were no three-point attempts, as well as no free throws. Those were the two biggest issues, and it seemed like they weren't being fixed. Anyone who brought this up, however, was quickly silenced, because most were happy Fultz was playing at all. Philly ended up winning their last nine games of the season. Markel played okay, but there still weren't any three-pointers, and the free throw was still broken. Many were rightfully confused at why the same issues were still here five months later, but just shrugged their shoulders and <laughs> hoped it would be fixed with time. In the oh, last man, game of the 2017-18 season, Fultz posted the youngest triple-double in NBA history with 12 points, got broken by Dennis 10 Smith, assists, I think. and 10 or no, rebounds. Never mind. Maybe he... An overall solid game that showed he could play well, even without a jump shot. At the end, when he grabbed oh his 10th board, he was mobbed by his teammates. Show at the end, when he grabbed his 10th board, Wait. play well, even without Put a some attention on this shot. play, though. That At man, the... Thom was trying to throw it down, and Fultz said no. When he grabbed his 10th board, he was mobbed by his teammates. He's him, bro. He's going to be he's gonna be in the league for the next 10 years, as long as he doesn't get injured again. Showing how much they believed in the kid. It was a great thing to see. Fast forward to the playoffs, and Fultz barely plays, getting DNPs in the second round series versus Boston. The reason for this varied on who you asked. Asked. Philly claimed it was because Fultz needed more time before playing in the postseason, and others said it was because Fultz just wasn't good enough. The series against the Celtics had to be one of the most mentally challenging events a rookie could ever go through. Seeing Jason Tatum, the guy who Dang. was traded for you, drop bucket after bucket to eliminate your team as you could do nothing but sit and watch, it was tough. As the Sixers lost 4-1, there was disappointment, but hope in the air. It was a wild season, so the offseason could be a time for everything to slow down and let Fultz recover to his full abilities. Remember, just 12 months ago, he was the top prospect in the nation. What if all he needed was some time to rest and recoup? Fultz and Joel Embiid discussed off-season hey, training yo. plans, and Embiid recommended Drew Hanlon as a trainer. Hanlon is known oh, for training some of the best players in the game, and with his ever-so-popular social media presence, hype was on the way in Fultz Town. Over the summer, Hanlon released videos of Markel working out, not showing any videos of the form, but promising that he'd turn him into an all-star. Embiid and Simmons were great and all, but promising that- LOL. Why Why you say LOL to that? Why you say just LOL? That one of the top says Sixers fans get excited. I one of the bottom- <laughs> Yo, Markel was not convinced. <laughs> he'd turn him into an all-star. Embiid and Simmons were great and all, but none of this will work out unless Fultz truly develops into the player you got that that right. he can become. Fast forward to the 2018-19 season, Markel talks about his renewed confidence, how the summer was one of his hardest working, and that he was ready to become the third star. In the preseason, Fultz looked okay. His mid-range shot looked pure, which was reassuring. Plus, his finishing and playmaking was solid. He did make one three-pointer, the first of his NBA career, a corner mm, wide-open triple. Like the, one the form looked not bad, a little on the slow side, but much better than the disaster that was his rookie season. Yeah, solid. The only issue is that, once again, the shot was nothing like his college All right, but you're not getting back there at that point. and had a lower release point. Is this really a shot that he could shoot 40% from three with oh, like no. he did in college? The 2018-19 season began with monolithic expectations for Markel. It was time to show that untapped potential and that new shooting. It all started in Boston, TD Garden, a rematch of last season's playoff series and Philly's chance to get revenge. Unfortunately, Boston blew the Sixers out. 
Tatum shined and Fultz was invisible. He scored 5 points total, 2 of 7 from the field, and 1 jump shot which was an off balance 2 pointer. This is when fans really began to get upset. How is it that hey, after ben. all of this time, Markel still couldn't shoot any threes? Philly started out the season 8 and 5, Fultz looking mediocre with little to no three pointers. He also made headlines for his wacky free throw forms. How do I donate? Do exclamation point donate or donation. Donate, I think. At slash donate. I don't. Exclamation point donation. The infamous double pump as well as whatever this is, was worrying. The Sixers weren't impressed, and by now they had run out of patience. They soon traded for all-star forward Jimmy Butler, which yanked Markel out of the starting lineup and onto the bench. November 19th, 2018 was Fultz's last game with the Sixers. His agent announced that they'd be looking for a November shorter what? Fultz's last game and onto the bench. November 19th, 2018 was Fultz's last Dang. game with the Sixers. It's been four His years. His agent announced that they'd be looking for four a shoulder years? specialist to diagnose an injury, and Markel was out indefinitely. This was the second straight year that he'd play for a few games, then get pulled out before he had a chance to truly get his feet wet in the game of basketball. The weird part about all of this is that Fultz was hitting mid-range shots at a- Imagine if the Sixers still had Fultz, Jolie, Noel, Embiid, and Simmons, and they were all actually good. Solid clip. There were some games when he hit multiple 15 footers, so why couldn't that translate to three pointers? Sure, right after the Suns there. game, Fultz talked Noel. with Allen Iverson. You gotta wonder if AI told him to trust his body and sit out. A few weeks later, he was diagnosed with thoracic outlet syndrome. It's a condition that affects the shoulder. Some were skeptical as they believed Fultz's team made up this injury to match the fact he simply forgot how to shoot. Oh, Others brother. were happy that his injury was finally diagnosed and that he could begin his recovery process. The trade deadline arrived and Fultz was shipped out to the Orlando Magic for Jonathan Simmons and a heavily protected first round pick. I remember. Philly was all in for a title run with their big four. They didn't have time to wait for Markel to get better. For Fultz, Orlando seemed like a good spot. A team with much less media attention, who didn't have championship hopes. Hopefully here, he can return to his number one pick self. This trade represents the failure of what could have been. Fultz, Embiid, and Simmons were expected to be one of the best big threes the league had to offer. And instead, what flag for whatever is that? mysterious shoulder-related issue, it just couldn't come to fruition. The Sixers have never been the same. For years, they've lacked a shot-creating guard to lead their team. Markel was supposed to be that guy and didn't pan out. Once he arrived in Orlando, Markel began working with the Magic staff to get healthy. He didn't play for the rest of the 2018-19 season, meaning he played 33 games total. Donate $5 for my B-Day. Uh, you gotta, you gotta, what's it called? Uh, click the link, the, what's it called? But uh, I was camped out for the J crossover event and I went to a punk show afterwards. Came home at 2 a.m. for the Pacific time. For me, Pacific time. Been one of my best birthdays ever in this stream is the cherry on top. Can't thank you enough. Been watching you for a year and a half, maybe two. Can't thank you enough for the hours I spent watching you and always being hilarious. Love it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, all the wheels. Been here the whole time. With the Sixers. Appreciate it. 33. He never really got a fair chance to oh, showcase his skills. And the birthday, watching the, the, watching the stream. And Boat just man. as quickly Boat as man. he was in Philly, he was was out. Fultz made his Magic debut on October 23rd, 2019. He hit a few mid-range shots and threw down a vicious slam. The three-pointer, after two and a half years, still remained a non-factor. At this point, fans just focused on oh, yeah, He probably on meant to make that like a stream donation message, I get it, but I read it. So, yeah. of his game. No point in dwelling on the jump shot. Throughout the season, Fultz showed flashes. Whether it was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with LeBron James down the stretch, throwing down mm. poster dunks in transition, or simply staying healthy, Markel impressed many I love with that his dunk. play and averaged career-best numbers. 12 points a night on 47% shooting, 5 mm. assists, and 5 rebounds per contest with Fire elite steps. finishing. 
discipline, defense, and great mid-range shooting. He shot an ugly 26% from downtown. Mid-range leaders. Jesus, yo. Shea, 81% from 10 to 20 feet is insane. No way he played all those games. There's just no way he played. No way. Dang, Victor Oladipo. Rubio? No, Ru Rubio probably had two attempts. They didn't have a minimum attempts? No, yeah, no. But Shea be shooting, though. Down. The only difference between Orlando and Philly was the fact that he simply attempted more threes. He was no longer hesitating, as he once did. When he caught it beyond the perimeter, he fired away. The weirdest part is that he was so damn good shooting mid-range shots. There were times when he would light up an opposing team with just jumpers. It's because His of strength. It's because of strength. As someone who has had shoulder issues, you see how when he shoots from downtown? He did. When he you see how he shoots and when how he brings it? It's lower. He's trying to release it quicker. Away. I never even... He's at a different... He's on a different level of bag good. with the, the perimeter shooting. Because of strength. When you're... When you're... Uh, when my shoulder was messed up, when I was playing with my friend, John, um, I was playing at the courts, the basketball courts. I was releasing from down here. I'm usually... Watch the videos of me shooting. I'm releasing where he's releasing. All the way up here when I shoot mid-range, it's nuts. So when you're outside and you're trying to shoot and you have no strength and your shoulder mobility is messed up, you release down here because you, you genuinely... Not that you can't bring it up here but it just it just doesn't feel right shooting mid-range shots there's a little bit of strength and mobility light up an opposing team with just jumpers his oh free throws God. were vastly improved as well gone were the days of the double pump Fultz shot 73 percent 73 from the line, which was right around the league average and the form i know is that much good more consistent fast forward to the bubble and the eight seed and magic squared off against the bucks game oh, one yeah. was unforgettable because orlando shot the isaac's last human absolutely appearance dominating them with Fultz putting up 15 points it finally felt like he was a part of a team a culture he was the quarterback to this upset victory they ended up losing in five but Fultz played well in his first ever real playoff series the narrative now surrounding Markel is simple he's a fine player without a three-point shot a high level bench player slash low level starter if he really wants to live up to that number one hype however he must gain an outside shot to become an all-star the 2020-21 season began and Fultz immediately went to work averaging 20 points per game on high efficiency destroying the washington wizards and looking like a star in the making and then he, he got had injured. no point shot but it didn't look like he needed oh. one down the stretch he simply bulldozed the defense out of the way just a few games later his knee collapsed and he tore his acl the magic were six and two i was actually Number driving home from my cousin's house and we were just talking about faults and how good and whatever and then i saw he got injured i think maybe we saw that he got injured. i don't know one in the oh yeah no i was driving home and then yeah i, I got home looked at my phone saw he got injured east before he went down Garbage. Fultz had shown tons of progress yet in the core of this success we forgot about why we hadn't seen this progress in so long injuries it was hard yeah, but it was it was a leg injuries january this puts his future in a bit of a question mark it's clear the town all this video is from before he came back when he came back he was playing goaded he was playing great this season. Talent is there, but Last he hasn't been games. healthy nearly as much as he should be to showcase what he's capable of. His game still has one glaring weakness, which is the lack of a three-point shot. And if he never develops that essential skill, he'll never reach the all-star potential he's capable of. As for my All theory the regarding goal. Markel, I think it was a mix of injury and mental pressure. Somewhere along the line, he must have developed some shoulder issues, which then added a hitch to his shot. Instead of resting and waiting, he tried to play through it, thus developing a lack of confidence in his shooting ability. Once that shoulder issue went away, the mental block remained and he has since not been able to get over it. He also lacks the strength shooting the ball from behind the perimeter. From 15 feet, the form looks beautiful. From 22 feet, it looks like he needs more umph. He's also good at shooting off the dribble, which requires less thinking when putting the ball up compared to I completely still. agree. We can sit here and theorize. I'll, yo, Dylan, you you might be, yo, you're, you're top, you're top something. You're top three, bro, because I just like how he says, oh, yeah, shooting off the dribble requires way less thought. I mean, I know, I think someone else said that maybe, that he's, like, quoting, like, paraphrasing from earlier in the video, but either way, you got to know some ball to, like, continue to reference that because that is so true. 
That's all we want. Yeah, I was about to say, screw the three-point shot. That's him. Right. That's him. That's but still no one him. really knows what happens besides Fultz himself. And he said it was an injury, so let's believe him. The Markel Fultz saga is truly one of the most heartbreaking stories the NBA has ever seen. One of the most hyped-up prospects in years went from a surefire all-star compared to James Harden to forgotten by many in Orlando. There's still a real chance he blossoms into a star player. Someone with as much talent as he possesses will always stick around, but it all resides on him developing a perimeter game. You can watch- At the end of the day, you know what I always say? Russell Westbrook right now, Derrick Rose 2018. Any player that ever has a uh, lack of shooting and is a fantastic finisher, fantastic player, and so good at something, just go off the bench. Back in 2016, 17, when Derrick Rose was on the Knicks, I liked his finishing. Obviously, I just liked him as a player, Um, all that stuff. But, and he's bad at defense. I was like, all right, you're bad at defense. You're bad at shooting. You're bad at two of the most important things in the NBA. Go off the bench. What happens? He doesn't get signed to a contract. Get, gets a minimum with the Cavaliers. I believe it was something like a minimum. And then gets traded from the Cavaliers to Tim Wolves, right? Cavaliers did nothing. And he ended up going like AWOL again for a second. Um, Goes to the Tim Wolves, right? Finally, everything starts clicking together then the next season still with the tim wolves drops 50 points why not only did he go to the bench he learned how to shoot he learned how to shoot consistently he never obviously need to learn he's old he's not gonna learn how to defend just randomly out of nowhere but bro learned how to shoot and then not only that i still think with with his skill he's obviously a different case because i think he would have still flourished without the shooting off the bench as a finisher and all that type of stuff but that's what i think i know westbrook's a less composed player than derrick rose um obviously racks up more stats but i I think that Westbrook off the bench. Now here's the thing: he's getting paid very much so starting money. Um, so I understand why you'd want to start him, continue to try to get the most value out of him because by having him on your basketball team, at least for this season, you're going to have less talent in other places because you're paying the man fifty million dollars. But I think that once this contract is up, he should be a bench player and it's going to be beautiful. I think it's going to work out great. He's going to have his little. Sure, you might hit the backboard seven times, but you hit a couple mid-range shots. Watch the NBA for the rest of your life, and then do the rest of the stuff. And you'll never see a story. I don't know. I also, I'll be honest. I had more, I, I had more faith in 2016 Derrick Rose than I do with current Westbrook. But I still think it'll work out to his favor. I think he'll be an NBA player off the bench. Like Fultz's ever transpire again. It's now up to him to make that story I'll have, have more, a good ending. I have more faith in current Derrick Rose. Dylan, you don't miss. At least not yet. Mellow video, this video, great. I have not watched any other video. Dang, he premiered this video August 21st, 2021. We are going to for sure watch a lot of these. I want to watch. I, I, I already talked about which ones I wanted to watch at the last video I recorded. So I'm not going to do this again. I'm going to end the recording and then talk about it on my stream. Screw you guys. Love you.